clearly there's an impact whether you're a retail investor, there's an impact if you are an institutional investor considering dipping your toe. What is the mood music from the clients that you serve? Uh, yeah, thanks very much for having me on again, guys. Um, yeah, the, the, it's definitely had a major impact on sentiments. I mean, there's definitely uh, several, uh, you know, there's several, there's many institutional investors who have begun plans to enter the digital asset space. And, you know, even as recently as the Celsius Luna disasters and just the general market downturn as a whole has caused them to step back from those, maybe reconsider them altogether. But I will say that, you know, our firm has been around uh, for for over four years now. So we were born in the in the 2018 downdraft. And there is considerably more institutions sticking around this time than there was previously. I mean, in 2018, it was really aggressive, the degree to which institutions tried to dissociate from the space. Uh, notably, the CBOE killing their Bitcoin future was quite extreme. And you are seeing many institutions stick with uh, stick with crypto this time around and, and see it as an opportunity, in spite of the sentiment being understandably low. Stefan, just to be clear, have you any exposure to FTX or any other of Sam Bankman's fr uh, Freed's companies or, or uh, any financial relationship to him? No, we don't. I mean, we, we have to stick to our language in their press release as we are a public company, but we have uh, no direct, or, and that means no accounts with FTX or any other uh, relationships like that and immaterial financial exposure altogether. However, as you point out, we are a firm that's operating in this industry and there is indirect impacts, uh, as you suggested, such as those to sentiment. Stefan, talk to us about, can you give us a sense of how many institutions are coming to you? How many clients do you have? How many people are wanting to be in this space? Yeah, so we have a bit of a, a we have a broad kind of institutional client. There are institutions, there is now an institutional client in crypto, which is is really here to stay. And I define those as, you know, the Bitcoin mining firms, large blockchain development companies, payment processors that are now ex, uh, accepting cryptocurrency that want to deal in large size, you know, via block. Um, and then there's then there's the active manager, which has kind of been, you know, a very kind of slow uh, has had a very slow adoption cycle. You know, I think in a lot of ways, the active manager has kind of had trouble seeing where they fit into this space. Mm. You know, the space is so volatile that it's not palatable for people to own, you know, for firms that are trying to focus on, on strong risk adjusted returns and targeting 20 to 10 to 20 percent annualized returns to hold assets as volatile passively. But what we did start to see at the end of the year was started to see institutions that are viewing the arbitrage uh, dynamics in cryptocurrency. Uh, for example, I mean, there's a there there are often times where where crypto traders are willing to borrow U.S. dollars at far higher rates than you see in borrowing markets uh, in traditional finance, just due to the lack of dollars in the ecosystem altogether. Um, and these dynamics that really present uh, arbitrage, alpha generation opportunities that are quite unique to a nascent space like crypto, yeah. um, people are starting to understand. So um, those clients are, are coming in the in the tens, definitely not in the hundreds. Um, but uh, it is it is happening for sure. You, of course, publicly traded company, as we said, and and of course, like much of the space, have seen a particular fall in your share price and market capitalization. When it comes to transparency, when you're putting out, are you putting out how many customers you have? Are you putting out what revenue statements look like? Are we are we expecting fewer people to be entering the space and coming to be served by a company like yours? So, I mean, specifically with FRNT, it's a little bit of an awkward question. I mean, we went public in at the end of April, right as the market started to accelerate its sell off, both in cryptocurrency and traditional finance. So, you know, we've been in a position where we haven't really had to guide the market all that much in terms of our expectations. And we're finding ways to do that as we understand the environment that we're coming into. Um, you know, for firms like ours, it's a bit of an interesting opportunity landscape because, you know, uh, we are getting, we, uh, as of right now, we're getting out of this relatively unscathed relative to a lot of competitors that are going out of business. So we've actually seen a large influx of clients that are looking to do trades with FRNT now oh, that they're maybe doing like with somebody influx? else. What numbers are we talking? Yeah, again, in the tens, you know, that's, mm. that's, that's in the tens of clients kind of coming to us uh, in, in, the, in the weeks, months, you know, tens, twenties, yeah. thirties, that's, that's material for us. I mean, this is, you know, I think a lot of time that the institutional wave of crypto has been a little exaggerated in terms of uh, what's actually been happening. Mm. People have been taking yeah. a very broad yeah. use of the term institution, but yeah, we're, we're very pleased with the progress that we're seeing in, in, even in an ugly market like this.